Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning and good morning again to everyone. We just welcome you, everybody, this morning to Morning Manifestations with Apostle Gary Deloach. And I am the Apostle Gary Deloach. Glad to come into your homes, your living rooms, your dens, whatever part of the house you may be resting in, busy in, working in, as many are working remotely these days from the um, confines and the uh, comfort of your home. Uh, what a great uh, privilege it is to be able to work and hear the word as well. Amen. Something to give you a boost, something to empower your work. Oh, yes. Uh, I like to work under the influence of the presence of the Lord, amen. Because in the presence of the Lord, we know what the word says. There is fullness of joy, amen. Actually have joy working, yes. There's fullness of joy and there are pleasures forevermore. So you want to be able to have fullness of joy while you're working. So you know what we want you to do? We want you to tag and we want you to share want you to, to come in and uh, let us know maybe where you're from if this is your first time and if not you know we can recognize our regular listeners those who come regularly uh good morning lady ronda uh d loach my beautiful uh wife and uh woman of god uh who works side by side with me and uh, she is my good thing so Blessings on you, my sweetheart. Uh, reach out and tag and share with somebody else. We are still on this wonderful teaching series entitled uh, Kingdom Worship. Kingdom Worship. And the one thing I like about this is that as opposed to uh, contrary to many beliefs or some thinking of some people, it is not a... Um, subject to be minimized as a broad subject uh, in the in the mind of god in the economy of god in the thinking of god worship is necessary it is very very necessary amen it is relevant for the times very very relevant because all of the prophetic things that we hear, hear in scripture back in the Old Testament times, leading and pointing up to where we are now. We're living in the day of the restoration uh, of the tabernacle of David. I think I said it last week. We're living in that reality right now. So we've entitled this kingdom worship. Now, now do we have Old Testament references? Yes, I'm dealing with a whole lot of Old Testament references as well as New Testament. But when we talk about kingdom worship, it has a focus, it has a purpose. It has an, uh, uh, that kind of worship has an object of the worship given to it or whom it is. And it's Christ, the king of this kingdom that we live in. So we have defined a lot of things in this teaching series concerning worship, the word itself, but we will continue to define. All the way through this series, there are terms and phrases that must uh, be given definition so that we can better understand how to please the king. I love the, the story, the allegory, uh, the book of Esther that it is, how that she would come before the king and she would say, if it pleases the king, wow. How much more today should we have that same mindset that when we come before the king, if it pleases the king, that word, that phrase simply means, you know, I want to be pleasing to the king. I want to come before you and be pleasing so that I won't be turned out of or away from your presence. If it pleases the king, Hallelujah, when she got uh, permission to come before him and he extended the scepter. 
So what was the purpose? She came to please him. Our worship should be to please him. We should come into his gates, as Psalm 100 said, with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. To do what? To give him exactly what he wants. He created us for himself, for worship, to show forth his praise. And I'm going to talk about a little bit today, a little bit more about the essence. I've been dealing with the purpose and there are a few more things I want to share with you that we have been given a lot of information as to the purpose and it's a whole lot. Amen. It's not just for us. Come on, it is not for us. Worship is um, for God. Primarily, number one, the number one reason why he created, created us to praise him is for himself. This people have I created for myself. Now, we can read it over, over and over and over and uh, dissect it, exegete it. We'll still come up with the meaning of that scripture is that God created us humans. Humans, humans, man with the hue, hallelujah, for himself, not for the world, not for Satan. I'm going to give you some specifics as well as some statistics. Uh, and, you know, some people say, well, we don't need statistics. I found something quite interesting over the course of my years of study as to how important worship is in God's mind and heart. So yes, he created worship. He created us in, in um, John 4, where we get the revelation where Jesus had the encounter with the woman and she had the encounter with him. When he says those great statements, that seemingly paradoxical statement, but heavily prophetic, the hour cometh the hour comes and now is. It's coming, but it's now. It's coming on the way, but it's already now. It's coming, but it's already in activation. My goodness. It's coming, but it's already being done. The hour coming. That day is here. Somebody say we're in that day right now. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made for us to be glad and to rejoice, to come into his presence with thanksgiving, enter into his gate. So worshiping, worshiping in the kingdom of God gives us access to the presence. It is the key. It is the eternal key. Bible speaks of the key of David. It is the eternal key into uh, the presence of the Lord to gain entrance right into your holy presence. I'd rather be a keeper of the door. Hallelujah. David said, I'd rather be a keeper of the door, a doorkeeper, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather be a keeper of the door of the house of God because that's entry point. That's a place, a point of entrance. Uh, Proverbs, that wonderful scripture that talks about blessed is the person who waiteth daily at the gates. Daily at the gates. Gates are for entrance. Gates are for entering and releasing. And once we go out of the presence of God, I always say this, we enter the house or the gathering place to worship, but we depart to serve what we received, what we have obtained, and attaining God's presence, we go out to release it. But basics, 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 basics now. Worship indeed is a required 
lifestyle. God created us because he wanted us to be with him. And in that, in that famous scripture, the hour come, cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For he seeketh such, or he seeketh after men to worship him. Now notice what he said and what he didn't say. He didn't say, I guess I should start with that first. <laughs> um, he didn't say that he's seeking worship. Okay, are we here? He didn't say that he's seeking worship, but he did say that he seeks men to worship in order that they may worship. Why? Because he has worship in heaven. There are angels. He has these angels in heaven that are bowing daily before him, worshiping him daily. All kind of worship going on in the high heaven, hallelujah, in his domain, the throne of God, around the throne, day, hallelujah. Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no night, <laughs> I'm told in heaven, but if it were day and night, day and night, day and night, giving praise, giving, uh, showing deference to, paying homage to God, our heavenly father, the so sovereign one, the almighty God, glory to God. So he seeks men. So he wants men to acknowledge who he is, acknowledge his character. The very essence of worship speaks of, essence speaks of the very intrinsic nature of something. What makes it what it is? Amen. The nature of, of something, who it is or who he is and what it is. What is it? It is homage. It is Worship is the acknowledgement of who God is. So that's what we're going to be talking about today again, getting into some more specifics uh, about the purpose. And we've talked about a whole lot. I'm going to start on talking about, um, we last talked about getting the word in our minds, uh, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And then that's in Ephesians. In the Colossians, we talked about speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So we, we talked about how that praise and worship here in the kingdom can be used and is used for teaching. How do we speak to one another in psalms, hymns? Psalms, word of God set to music. Hymns speaks about the very character in nature of God. We need more hymns to be sung, you know? Uh, we're not, you know, I know some people say, well, it's about contemporary worship. There are times when I really like to hear that word when it comes to God's worship. We must, we must worship with all forms that are legitimate according to the scripture. We have the script to go by. It is the word of God. And remember, he is the object, the focus, the center, and the circumference of our worship. So how do we know how to worship him? How do we know how he wants to be worshiped? He tells us in the scriptures. Praise, worship. Enter into his gate first with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Hallelujah. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is how you worship him. And you shall worship him how in spirit and in truth, in a lifestyle of obedience to the object. He is the object. He is the one that, that has created us. And we want to live in his presence. Uh, I often refer to one of my favorite readings of scriptures in Mark where Jesus invites his disciples 
Scripture says he called them unto himself. He called them that they may be with him. He called them. Can I tell you that he's called us that we may first be with him, live in his presence, hang out. <laughs> Ooh. Blessed is the man, Psalm 65, verses four, uh, five. Blessed is the man whom thou chooses to enter into his presence, in your presence. Blessed is the man. He's chosen us. We are the chosen ones. Glory to God. So he has called us first, as he did the disciples, to be with him. Before they went out and did anything, before they went out, preached one message, before they went out to witness to anybody, he called them to be with him. So what does that sound like? That he wanted some time of intimacy. He wanted them to know who he was. Get to know me. He wanted them to know everything about why he called them. He wanted to introduce them even basically as we talked about in sonship. He came, first of all, amen, to do the will of his father, to manifest his father to the world in the earth. Yes, 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 yes. He, he came as a living representation of his father, that when you have seen me, you have seen the father. So now they're getting to know the father through him and getting to know him so that they can perpetuate the message that he brought to the earth, that they can perpetuate and begin to tell people who he is, who Jesus is. So that's what this worship message is really about. Well, I'm teaching, I suppose, before the teaching, I wanted to just get a little intro in, amen, to get that in. And we just want to make, I want to just make this one announcement. If you would allow me to, uh, I, you know, I want to keep the flow of how things are going. And, you know, uh, if you, uh, preacher, five-fold ministry person, you know how that can be. <laughs> Amen. Trying to flow and you get excited about things as God is revealing things to you. The revelation on the spot, teaching uh, out of your notes. But uh, I believe this, that those of us who are called, we're called to be anointed, to definitely allow space for uh, the anointing to bring forth the revelation of what we are teaching and to bring forth new things, new things do I declare unto you. Now they shall spring forth. But tonight, tonight, tonight is the night for, we're doing one night again this week. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, uh, I believe we're in a great time because we're in the eight days of the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles and where those who were brought out of Egypt in the wilderness, they it's called the Feast of Booths as well, uh, be, uh, a Sukkot. Uh, they made booths, called them Sukkot, in the wilderness where they could look up, you know, they, they, they had these branches on the top but had openings where they could look up into the sky and the, they were thanking God for all that he had done for them. He's the covering over them, all that he had done. Thanksgiving is a part of worship, is a part of praise. So wife and I really gave God some thanks last night in this house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not, not just on the keyboard. I'm telling you, we praised the Lord. We thanked him from the time of even uh, our evening meal, thanking God for where he had brought us from, for what he has done, sometimes just to recall all the many wonderful blessings will begin to, 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 to spark, uh, start a spark 
hallelujah, a flame begins to come in you. The power of the Holy Spirit will begin to just empower you to praise the Lord because when you begin to think, you should think. When you think about what God has done, you can't help but to start thanking him. Glory to God. So tonight we're going to be back in a family prayer revival. Holy Spirit spoke to me a long time back, several months ago now. I don't even know. I've got to go back and look at the records to even give you the times, to give you even glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm, I'm going to bring it up to you. But he says, I want you to begin a prayer revival. I'm going to bring revival through the family. I want to restore the family. I want to restore the family. And I'm going to restore the family. Amen. Yes. So I said, yes, Lord, I will obey. I will do exactly what you want me to do. Amen. Here is the announcement here. Uh, yes. Uh, family Prayer Revival, Wednesday, September 23rd at 7 p.m. That's this evening. You don't want to miss it. Stronger, it's getting stronger, stronger and stronger. God is manifesting himself. God is showing himself. He's making himself known. He's touching the lives. He's touching families through prayer. Men are always pray and not faint. Always pray and not faint. Come on, somebody. Always pray and not faint. So I want to invite you. It's on our prayer line, and I'm going to give you that information. Glory to God. We have a new prayer line as of last week, a no number. And here it is on your screen. The conference line is 267 eight zero seven nine six one one again two six seven eight zero seven nine six one one and the access code is five seven seven three two seven hashtag or pound we have the same access code uh, i'll leave that there for just a, a few more seconds so you can get that uh if you would like to get in a early prayer request. Uh, we're going to put up the number that you can call the ministry line, our ministry number, but I'll let you look at that just a few more seconds so that you can get that. We're taking prayer requests. We, we pray uh, after the hour of prayer at the end of our prayer time. And it is really fiery, powerful. We're touching so many things concerning the family. Families worldwide, families everywhere, amen. Uh, uh, talking about, we're praying against uh, division in families. We're praying, first of all, for the salvation of families, whole houses to be saved. What was that word that the Apostle Paul gave when they were released from the, that Philippian dungeon and the guard was about to kill himself? He said, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and, your whole, and you shall be saved in your whole house in your whole house. I believe today that the same thing will happen if we pray. There's too many prophecies of end time outpourings where God mentions the family, sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Isaiah 60 talks about our children. Children are going to worship. They, our sons will come from afar and our children shall worship at our side. Some of you have sons that are far off. They're far off, maybe not so much in distance, but they're they, they far from the faith. You taught them, you trained them as children, but they're now far off, they're distant. But through this kind of incessant, incessant, refusing to give up, persistent, refusing to give up, consistent prayer, they will come from afar off. And our daughters, they're going to worship at our side. Glory to God. Glory to God. So if you want to get this, you want to get in on this 
Amen. Uh, I want to give you, amen, the prayer, uh, our ministry number, so that you can call in a prayer request if you so desire to, amen. And we want you to get it in early so we can have on our list a uh, special prayer request that you want to be prayed for. If it's a private prayer request, we won't pray for it on the line while we're on. We want to respect your uh, wishes and your privacy. But you know what? The very God that seeth in secret, the scripture says, will reward you openly. When we go into our secret closet, God sees in secret. He knows. Hallelujah. But then in Philippians, he says to let your request be made known unto God. So when you let us know, and if you want it in private, we're just offering more strength. Two are better than one. They have a greater reward for the labor together in the Lord. That number is on your screen now, 501-983-2355. Again, 501-983-2355. And you can email us. The ministry email is pcc underscore fan, F-A-N, at yahoo.com. Come email us your prayer requests and as well your testimonies. Amen. People of God, we're getting the testimonies over the line. Amen. Uh, sometimes they have been emailed or text to us what the Lord has done. Uh, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. And we're doing a little worship, not a whole lot in this time of prayer, but just setting the atmosphere, setting the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Saints used to sing this song in my old home church. Uh, Truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Truly wonderful. Truly wonderful, oh, truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory, glory. <laughs> that old mother I keep referring to, Mother Annie Mae Fenter, she was a psalmist. She created a song in the Lord in the spirit, spiritual songs, songs, hymns, and spiritual songs right there. That was, I believe, that was one of her creations. Truly wonderful. Seeing the Lord has done great things whereof we are glad. Well, well, that's the last announcement I'm going to make right now. The other announcements will come at the end. But do please, please join us. Amen. We're in a tremendous time uh, of the year. We're in 57, uh, 82. Amen, the Hebrew New Year. We'd like to say to you, uh, Shana Tova, uh, good year, sweet year. May the sweetness of the Lord be in your life for this year. You have a sweet year and a good year. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, glory to God. We'll talk about later what all of that means, but one of the things, too, that we're in, uh, uh, a Smita year. Uh, glory to God. Uh, in our normal time, 20, uh, what was it, 2014 up to now, 2021, a uh, period of seven years, a smita year in the Hebrew understanding is a time of rest and release. Rest and release. The farmers leave the land to rest after seven years. Amen. Do nothing. Let it rest and recover. Rest and recover. And it is also a time of release that talks about even Jubilee, a release and doing the time, a releasing of debts, a forgiveness of those things, and a releasing. And I just want to say to you, as we rest, I believe that's a release of the, the goodness of God in a phenomenal way, exponentially. Glory to God. Debts canceled. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on. Uh, recovering of uh, ancestral properties, recovering of things that have been lost, things that have been stolen, 
we can have the expectation because when God has set these times, you know that there's he has designed even things in the air. He's shifted things in, in order so that these blessings can come. These are the times that we should celebrate, not get stuck in uh, the man-made holidays, but be willing to celebrate the feast. He didn't say the feast of the Jews, but they are the feast of the Lord. And they are to be celebrated perpetually. Well, we thank God for this time of study. I'm going to get it right here. As I was talking, we left off last week talking about getting the word in our minds. How do we get the word in our minds? Worship helps us to get the word in our minds and in our hearts. Let the word, allow the word to dwell in you richly. If there ever was a time we need the rich deposit of God's word inside of us so that we can be weaponized to stand in the evil day so that we can know what we have access to, so that we can know how to live and have, amen, and, and continuously be victorious. We already have provisions that have been made for the victory through Jesus' victory on the cross of Calvary. Yes, so we triumph in the Lord. To keep triumphing in the Lord, we need, amen, we need to understand what he has given us. So we got to get the word in our minds and get it in our hearts. These people worship me uh, with their lips, with their uh, uh, mouths. <laughs> they do praise me, but their hearts are far from it. How teaching and admonishing one another in musical praise, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, we teach. It becomes a vehicle to teach. Amen. Uh, that word admonish is to put in mind, to call to mind, put in mind, no deal, to call attention to, to caution, to warn and to remove gently. So sometimes as we're worshiping the Lord this way, we see things begin to happen. So worship in the kingdom involves a lifestyle of obedience. obedience. Now, other purposes for kingdom worship is to reveal the character of God. I love this. To reveal the character, the nature, the essence, who he is of God in his presence. What are you saying, Apostle Deloach? That we are to know God through and by his presence. In Judah, the Lord is known. That's right in the scripture. That's on the what second page of my uh, teaching syllabus. Uh, after the foreword, the first page, Judah had such significance and praise in God, in heaven. Its name has character. God gave it. What is the character, the essence of the thing? God loved, liked, and loved the name Judah, and he gave it special favor. What well, Judah? Judah was the fourth son of Leah. She, uh, she was a scorned, spurned uh, woman, rejected, um, did not have the love of her husband. He did not want her, but after uh, birthing three children ahead of Judah, you know, with each child, she thought perhaps that when he realized through the naming of those children how important they were, what the name of Levi, Simeon, Reuben, Simeon, the hearing of God. But he did not. But the fourth child, not only, it did, it did not bring the love of a husband, but it did something for her, brought change. Worship changes the atmosphere. Who am I talking to today? You need an atmosphere change. Come on, somebody. You need your atmosphere changed. 
you feel hindered, you feel stuck, you are struggling, the enemy has lied to you, he's cheating you out of the truth of God and believing and causing you to believe that, you know, there's no way you can overcome, that you, you can't come out of this, or you can't go any further. Oh no, it changed the, the whole dynamic of life for Leah. When she birthed that fourth child, she said, you know, his name will be called Judah. She said, now will I praise the Lord? What was she saying? My husband doesn't have to love me. He don't have to love me. Nothing necessarily has to change, but I'm going to praise the Lord. Whoa. The nature of his name. It was God's deliverance for her to begin to take a different outlook, perspective, because I birthed you some joy. I birthed your deliverance through praise. Glory to God. So then, uh, what we must understand then is that to reveal God's character, we reveal it through certain kinds of worship, certain ways that we worship the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Scripture says in Hebrews, he is the same today. He is uh, <laughs> today and forever. And his written word, or logos, uh, does not change. But yet, say yet, yet, mm, yet, 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 he continuously and he continually brings forth fresh illumination, light, revelation of his word and revelation of his character. He wants us to know that you may know the hope of his calling, that you may know, hallelujah, the hope of his calling. Huh. He wants us to know him so that we can serve him. Come on. And what has been given, that's freely given to us. So worship, one of the purposes is to reveal, make known the character of God, the character of God. Now, there's, there were certain moves, uh, movements that have been recorded in history concerning uh, how we worshiped God. Good morning, Bishop Larry. L. Carter, my best friend. Good morning, my friend. Protestant movement, we can, you know, in history, there were different movements. What we saw and can look back on it and saw how worship went, the songs that were done. In my syllabus, I talked about uh, the songs uh, reveal who God is, even points us in the direction of God's moving. Come on, he, come on, he is never stagnant. He is not a God who is standing still. He's always moving. He's moving from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Come on, from di to different seasons, he establishes. But the Protestant movement songwriters, they did something in that move of God. They extolled. That's one of the words for praise. To extol, to lift high the virtues of someone or something. In this case, God, they extol, they gladly spoke of in song who this God is that they knew during that time, how they saw God. Remember, the intrinsic nature uh, is uh, the, 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 the same as the essence. The essence involves the intrinsic nature or the basic nature or character of something, what it is, who it is. So their songs spoke of the great mercy of God. Great is your mercy toward me, great mercies, hallelujah, in providing salvation through grace by faith. It is of the Lord's mercies 
that we are not consumed. That was in that movement. The holiness movement, songwriters extol God's holiness in second coming of Christ. He's coming back. He's coming again. The Pentecostal movement, songwriters did something a little different. They praised God for his supernatural works. Entering into praise, hallelujah, in response to what they saw and what they heard and what they felt. What they saw God do. Songs were, you know, based around it. I just sang one. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Hallelujah. I can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hallelujah. He's my friend. Healed my body and told me to run on. Some of y'all out there know those songs. Glory to God. But then the charismatic movement, these are things that are recorded in, in the history of the church. The charismatic movement, chorus writers, praise God for his greatness, his liberty, his joy, his provision. They praise God in order to bring forth his presence. Amen. Praise them to bring forth his presence and talked about the character. There it is. The character of God. Who is this God that we're serving? Who is this God that did so much in the Old Testament, but yet even doing more in the times that we're in New Testament in this dispensation now? He not only took off the chariot wheels, hallelujah, for the Israelites when they were in battle, He's doing it for us today and a whole lot more. Glory to God. He's bringing down institutions that oppose him. He's using us. Glory to God. According to Psalms 149, he is using his people, hallelujah, to bring down the enemy that opposes the kingdom of God. I said it, that opposes the kingdom of God. We got to get this. All right, here it is. Psalm 9 and 11. Psalm 9 and 11 talks about, glory to God, how that when we sing the praises and declare the name of God, the character of God, God begins to manifest himself in the room, in the space, in your area, in your cities, in your nation, as to who he is. Can I get some witnesses? He will not allow you to talk about his greatness. Woo! He will not allow you to talk about his power nor his authority without being present and showing up wherever you're building that throne. Remember, when we lead people into worship, it's one of the three components of kingdom worship as far as being a kingdom culture uh, that I told you about. When we lead people into the presence of the Lord, according to Psalm 22, we lead them into kingdom and divine order. God has a divine order. What does he order? Enter into his gates. Before, as you're coming into his presence, you come in with praise. That's the protocol. That's the divine order. That's kingdom order. Come on. We don't come in asking God for a whole bunch of this and that. We come in acknowledging who he is, acknowledging his sovereignty, acknowledging his ability, his, his, um, his creative ability because he created us, acknowledging him as the God of all gods. There is no God that can rival him. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Like Jehovah. Oh, no. Somebody help me praise God. So I dare you to say, there's no God like Jehovah. Psalm 96 and 11. So we, we're talking about revealing the character of God. Don't you know that this, I love it. That's, this is such a broad subject. And we thought it wasn't that broad the years ago, but we just, until we got into the study of it. I told me, to be, he's calling me to be an apostle of praise and worship, to make known, to teach it, to reveal its purpose, to help people to understand it, 
to have people to begin to live the reality of it, to come and do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That how we have such access to him through him and reveal his character. He shows up. He will come there. Come on. He will lose it. Uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, God speaks to him and says, he says, uh, I will watch over my word, Jeremiah, to that I may perform it. I'm going to watch over it. And when you dare speak it, come on, my friend there, Bishop, is a word preacher. He's a faith preacher, great teacher. Love the teachings. Glory to God. When we begin to speak the name, God shows up. He says in Isaiah 55 and 11, he says, my word will not return unto me void or empty. My word will not return unto me void, except first it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in the thing, or prosper wherever I have sent it. So once we begin to reveal, that's why we have to sing songs. Now, worship overall is a lifestyle. It's not just an act. It's just not, not a service. It's not an activity. Come on. It's, it's, it's the now rather than the verb. Well, you know, I'm a worshiper because I go to church and I sing songs. No, 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 no. That's, that's a small part of it. It's the noun. Is the fact that it is a lifestyle, a life given to the totality of giving yourself over to God while in his presence, meeting the demands and the requirements of God from creation that we would come into his presence and come to know him. Well, I got to read this scripture. Hallelujah. Psalm 96 and 11. And the word of God says to us here, uh, new Bible, still breaking it in. So there it is. All right. And the word of the Lord says, let the heavens rejoice. Let the heavens rejoice. <laughs> and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. We're going to read further. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. Look at the elements. But we declare his names, who he is before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. Glory to God. I want to back up to the ninth verse. Hallelujah. Uh, seven verse. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord the glory and the strength. Give unto the Lord the glory. Do. Ode. Do. That's do unto his name. Bring and offer. Still teaching us about how to enter into the presence, the protocol of worship. Bring unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. Now you acknowledge in his strength, his power, his, his kingly authority, his right to rule. Glory to God. He reigneth. He reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. The, and he shall judge the people righteously. So then the word here, amen, that gives us this prescription or give us, should I say, uh, the fact that God, amen, uh, does so many great things. The doings of God are defined. If you get into the Hebrew, the word Aliyah, 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 the exploits, the deeds, right through those scriptures, we saw one thing. We saw in those verses that and, um, that were synonymous, it talks about the doings of God. He does powerful things. He does great things. Let, let me go back to Psalm 65. Since I'm talking about that, one of my favorites, I quoted it earlier, 
but I didn't quote the whole part of the scripture, Psalm 65. But he talks about in Psalm uh, 9, the doings, Aliyah, the exploits. He does great exploits. Exploit, excuse me, when we release the name and the character as we know him, that's why when we spend time with him, when we read his word, we find out all of these uh, attributes, all of these accolades, all of these descriptions of who our God is that we serve. And we need to know so that we can learn how to apply his names at the right time for the right situations. Let me give you some example. Uh, you, you have, you have uh, lack in your home. Uh, you need provision. What's one of his names for provision, the compound name? that he is Jehovah Jireh. He sees and he knows. And where he sees, and we begin to, to, to implore the use of his name as we pray, asking whether it's asking or decreeing. We decree that Jehovah Jireh shows up today and he is present. He will provide. Abraham said he will provide a lamb or a ram. He will provide the sacrifice. He will provide the offering. When you call his name and you have, come on, not just familiarity, but you know him by that name. See, I like to use this analogy about knowing as opposed to not knowing someone. You can know somebody. You know, people testify. Like my wife and I mentioned this last night. Amen. Uh, people can know somebody's name and don't know them experientially. They just heard that that's his name. Well, you know, that's your neighbor. You may not even have times of uh, coming together in fellowship, but you know the names. You met each other, but experientially, you don't know. You haven't had any experiences. You haven't had any encounters. Glory to God. Even in our testimonies, people, that's, we, we can't really... Uh, it tells somebody about something that we don't know about. I testify about my personal healing experiences while in the presence of the Lord. I was healed of a ruptured disc in the presence of the Lord. They recommended surgery. I said, no, I depended on God. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, some of you heard it before. I'm not going to tell the whole thing, but while I was there, barely could walk on a cane there to, to preach three to four nights, could barely stand up without support. But the Lord healed me while worshiping. I knew that in the presence of the Lord, we can get everything that we need. He, I proclaimed him as Jehovah Rapha, and he came down just, I mean, he will show up when you call his name. <laughs> his name has all oh, many, many, many ramifications. His name, glory to God, is loaded and packed, glory to God. His name is the greatest name that you could ever call. You can call him Jehovah Rohi, my shepherd. If you need peace, he is Jehovah Shalom. And while we're worshiping God, we have to learn to employ his names to release the character of God in our present situation or our present experience. So then uh, this word speaks of the exploits. It speaks of the deeds of God, the workings of God, the actions of God, his dealings whoo, and his doings. Let me read Psalm 65, four. Blessed, empowered, Fortunate, empowered to prosper. Happy is the word blessed also. Happy is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee, unto the Lord, that he may dwell in thy courts. Getting to know him. Dwell in thy presence. Come on, one on one with him dwell in his courts, in his face. Come on. You're recognized and known by your face. 
God is recognized and known by his face. That's why he says in 7 Chronicles 7, 14, he says, seek my face. Jeremiah writes and says, your face will I seek, God. David says, I will seek your face early. Jeremiah said, early will I seek you. We seek in his face because he's known by his face. We want to get to know his face. Glory to God. Hey, I know my wife's face. My, 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 my. I see her face more than I see any other face. I'm in her face. Come on now. Woo! Glory to God. And she's in my face. Glory to God. Close up in her face. I know God wants us to see and seek his face. So he says, blessed is the one who call whom thou chooses. He's chosen us. Calls him to approach unto me. What is the approach? He says, and that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of the holy temple. Now, the fifth verse is the one I wanted you to see here. By terrible things in righteousness. Terrible means, it is translated to mean awesome. By awesome things. Mm. Awesome. Come on, somebody shout with me. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know if there's a word that exceeds awesome, awesome, powerful, but awesome. Awesome is that something that you're not used to seeing done on that scale by awesome things in righteousness. Look at how God reveals himself through kingdom worship by doing awesome things. Remember, it is your key, your eternal key to the presence of God, giving us access to Heaven opens the, oh my God, not only tithing will open the windows of heaven, but worship will call the heavens to open unto us. When they worship God in the tabernacle of Solomon, the heavens open and the Shekinah, the manifest presence of God, the manifest consciousness, the manifest presence of, any, of a divine eternal God was released to come down in the earth where people were who were worshiping him this way. The word Shekin, the base word Shekin, that through the, the Jewish Targum, that the rabbis, that word uh, Shekinah is really not really listed, it's not in the Bible, but the description of that glory and the Jewish teachers and rabbis came up with the word Shekinah. Shekinah means to reside and to stay permanently. Their worship, their worship intimately calls God's presence, his glory. We're in the days of glory, y'all. Get ready, the glory is here. The glory is coming, it's already here. Come on, the hour cometh and now is. It's coming, but it's here right now. It's coming, it's being experienced right now. It's coming and it's already activated, in is done, is activated already among the people who understand this calling to worship him this way. Yes, the worship shakan means to reside and to stay permanently. They built the throne that God says, I'm going to stay here permanently as long as you keep worshiping me this way. My God body of Christ, you mean we can have God to stay permanently? Yes, he's in us. We're the carriers of his glory, but something happens on a corporate scale and the corporate is stronger, greater than the individual. When we come together, God will show up. His presence will spill over glory throughout the earth affecting institutions of all kinds, it's affecting governments, affecting homes and households, affecting everything in his wake. Glory to God. Terrible things in righteousness. Will thou answer? My God. Through worship, awesome things in righteousness. Will thou answer us? He will answer us. Oh God, I'm trying to read it expressively. Ooh. 
O God of our salvation, who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are afar off upon the sea, which by his strength set it fast the mountains, being girded with power, which still at the noise, look at what he does. <laughs> I told you that praise and worship, praise is the ordained strength of God. He silences the enemy according to Psalm 8, but listen to what he says. Blessed, empowered, happy are those who he chooses to come near him, to come into his presence, because I'm going to do something mighty. I'm going to do something powerful when you adhere to this kind of worship in the kingdom. When you understand the focus of worship is not yourself. When you understand that the fo focus of worship is not, come on, uh, part of the church program. Come on. Amen. It's not uh, physical or spiritual calisthenics. It's none of that. It is because we've been created to come to him, to come in his presence. We've been created for him. It is not for entertainment. Come on, somebody. It's not for entertainment. It is not to be used in a worldly way. It is for God. So he can do this. And he says, he stilled the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. Praise and worship. This kind of worship will cause God to answer us, as he said in one of the above uh, verses, and put down the tumult of the people and bring the peace of God. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts are afraid at thy tokens. That's enough of that. So then one of the purposes of worship is what? Reveal the character of God to reveal the character of God, his exploits his deeds, who he is, what he does. What does God do? Let's go back in the past again, as I said, took off chariot wheels. Uh, one battle told Israel, uh, all I want you to do is shout. That's a form of praise. And the walls came down. He, he joined his voice with them, shouted with them, and raised the, there was a frequency, I believe it was a low frequency. <laughs> when he shouted with them, it changed the dynamic of the, dynamics of the shout. It wasn't them by themselves. Remember, when we do what we can do and God does what he can do, it changes the whole thing. Our praises just move from being earthly to heavenly. Get into another realm. Glory to God. <laughs> You know, it exceeds what we're able to do in our power and our own power, that God's power is reflected. God's power is the dominant source. And that frequency, which was so strong enough to cause all of the, 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 that, that stone, whatever kind of wall, stone wall that was so impregnable to begin to come down, shook it took it down when nothing else, when, when weapons of warfare could not even take it down. Glory to God. But a praise, a singular praise, took it down the frequency of heaven. My, 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 my. Awesome things. The works, the actions. Psalm 40 and 3, many will hear and see our worship and know the Lord because of the character of God revealed in our praise. Revealed in our praise. The nature, let, let me talk a little bit before I go on. Time is about to be up and I'm enjoying teaching today. Remember, I talk about my experiences. I've been healed many times, many times in, in worship, while worshiping. 
Because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy and, and his right hand pleasures evermore. He will pleasure us as we pleasure him. He takes pleasure. He takes delight. You mean God takes pleasure? Yes. Zephaniah said he sings over us. He will sing over us. When we pleasure him, if it please the king, <laughs> I'm bringing that up again. When we please him, come on, he don't want us to, poof. that's why he loved, he don't want us to get away. That's why he loved David so much. David praised the Lord like nobody's business. Come on, he, he didn't care who was looking. He's a king. He didn't care if he was looking um, unkingly, not kingly. On that day, when he got the revelation, that only way that we're going to bring this ark back to us is to pray the Lord, give him what he wants. And, the, and, and, and when he got it, take it back to Zion, that elevated place. The presence of the Lord is to always be lifted up. You can't put it in the background. You can't minimize it. You can't make it just, I mean, it's not just service. It's not the act. It's not the action, but it's the noun. It is a life, lifestyle. And the lifestyle is reflected in our corporate worshiping together. It's reflected in our worshiping. Private devotion leads to public worship. I do what I do because I worship in my private time with God. Remember, he called us to be intimate with him. So I want to get into this thing on distinguishing the type of worship in the kingdom that the Lord is calling for. Worship, we've defined it so many times, basically. But it's constant conversation. Well, let me let me let me go ahead and then back up to that. The essence, the nature, hallelujah. It is in its absoluteness, in its root idea, fundamental root idea, absolute worship is to bow. Oh, I preach that uh what was it several months ago? I think maybe last year. The, the absolute worship, total worship. Amen. Uh, the, to bow our hearts and lives before God and acknowledge his lordship. He is Lord. He is Lord. Is he really Lord? Do you obey him? Do you serve him? Do you attend to him? Do you spend quality time? What we give the most attention to will be what we worship. What we chase after the most will be what we worship. Amen. The most time we spend somewhere is usually it has more importance than our worship to our heavenly father. So it is bowing our hearts. Remember, their hearts are far from me, Jesus said. Their worship was in vain. They will come into a gathering place and worship in Matthew 15 and 8. You'll find it there. But the Lord says it wasn't doing anything for him. It wasn't moving him. Remember, blessed is the one whom God chooses to come near to you into your presence. You know, he wanted them to come. He wanted them to make the right approach. But then they have a different motive. They have a different reason. Either they lacked in their understanding, but I believe they had been told. I believe it was the fact that, come on, they began to get off. They began to be deceived. They were using their lips. They were using their mouth, but their hearts were far from them. And remember, Jesus was the one who told that woman to forget about your old religious experiences. Forget about your old religious teachings. She said, our fathers worshiped you know, at this well. You know, are you greater than he greater than our fathers? He said, your fathers didn't even know what they were worshiping. They were talking the talk, talking a lot of things. But that goes back to knowing somebody experientially. Amen, somebody. There's a difference in, you know, we can have knowledge. We can have, we can be good teachers. We can get, we can accumulate lots of information. And because we know how to organize something into a form, into a uh, particular platform or a an in, 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 uh, outline, should I say, and teach it, but the anointing may not even be present because there is no experiential uh, experiences 
that we that person has had to, to preach even to allow revelation to come. The anointing, when we come up, when we have the anointing, we have been smeared upon by God's presence. We become like him. His heart, his mind begins to be, you know, get into us that we can begin to discern what he wants, when he wants it, and how he wants it. Are you listening to me this morning? Come on, somebody else needs to reach out. We need more people in here. Tell somebody, reach out. Text somebody and tell them there's some powerful teaching. There's some good teaching going on. And you need to know this. Not just for praise leaders. It's for congregations. It's for pastors. It's for uh, apostles. It's for prophets. It's for evangelists, uh, teachers, and pastors. Because David was a king who had the Messiah's anointing. Every one of those entities of the fivefold ministry, you are required to be a worshiper. You need to know the presence of God. Glory to God. It is just not for the congregation. So reach out to somebody. Amen. So the essence, the nature, bow in our hearts, our lives before God, acknowledge his lordship, regardless of circumstances. Psalm 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise is going to be in my mouth. Rebecca 3, 17 through 19. That's the one that talks about if the you know corn is dried up in the stalk, there's no fruit on the vine, my God, no uh, cattle in the stall. He said, yet will I praise him in spite of circumstances. That's the essence of this worship. It defies cir human circumstances. Kingdom worship defies because it goes beyond. It penetrates the resistance, come on, of ungodly and earthly, come on, and uh, uh, the, the attack of the enemy, challenges of life. I will bless the Lord at all times, no matter what happens. It is learned through doing it. Worship is, is in the face of God, brings us to the face of God because I want to know you by your face. I know the terminology. What do we have? today in technology. Y'all familiar with FaceTime? You like to look at somebody's face when you're communicating with them, right? Face, God wants us to have FaceTime. My people call by my name and humble themselves and pray, seek my face. Seek to know my face. Oh, oh, you'll find grace in his face. <laughs> his face, uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, if, you, if, you, if you watch this later, Kristen, uh, my niece, yeah, I'm not promoting your business, but she has a business called the face of grace. Oh my God, glory to God, massaging the face, massaging he wants us to look into his face. His face is the face of love. You want to look into the eyes and the face, the face. You're known by your face. And he says, that's what I want you to do. I want you to stare. Worship is staring in the face of God. Worship is, is born out of the heart of God. He is the one who puts the love, the, the desire to know him because he created us for himself. He created us in his own image after his own likeness. So we have God. We have uh, God in us. Christ in us is the hope of glory. When he, when he created Adam, put him in the garden, that word teshlim in the Hebrew means icon, a likeness, image. He was made, created in the very image of God. He was the reflection of God on the earth. When people saw him, it was they were supposed to see what God looks like. Why Jesus said, why would Jesus say, when you have seen me, are y'all with me? Come on. Are you with me? Oh yeah, come on. We having church ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Woo! When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When you've seen my face, you've seen the Father. 
When you've seen how, when you've seen how I act, how I walk, what I do, my doings, that's that word again, my exploits, my deeds, my uh, actions, you have seen the Father with your own eyes. So worship is born out of the heart of God. You didn't put it in yourself. You were created for this. Say, I was created for this. I was created to live this way. I was created to be this way. I was created. I was formed. Hallelujah. Some have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Come on, you were created by God. How, how are you going to deny the, you know, how he's formed you? You must give him what he wants. This is the essence. This is the nature. It happens because we in relationship with him. Once in relationship, some things just happen uh, automate, automatically. That word uh, in the Greek, automate, when we do the parables of the seed, come on, the soil, the Bible says, when the, when the sower sowed the seed in the soil, he goes on to explain, he said, the, the soil makes increase of itself. It is conditioned by God already that once seed goes in there, it makes increase. The soil begins to make increase, automate, glory to God. Some things just automatically happen in an intimate love relationship. Those of us that are married, we know that. Come on, certain things, glory to love just begins to express itself even with words and sometimes in with, with moments of silence, even just staring, hallelujah. My sweetheart is on this line. She's probably saying, you better watch it. You better watch it, man of God. I'm going to be done come in and, and brought you a gift or something. Or come in, I'm going to come in and make you your, your, your favorite meal because just the communication of love, even without saying words, is understood. Certain things just happen. Worship just happened when your relationship is good with God and right with God. When you are doing the things, entering in, honoring the protocol, spending time to be with him. Yeah, she just showed up and said, amen. Am I teaching good? I know you're not going to shout me down when I'm teaching good. Hallelujah. Worship just happens. Worship is initiated in the heart of man by Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They all have, uh, they have work, they all intervene into this wonderful, wonderful medium, wonderful vehicle, wonderful lifestyle called kingdom worship. Holy Spirit, glory to God, also initiates in our heart. Remember, it is the key to the presence worship is. We hold the key to access, access. And it cannot be restricted to a certain time, or oh, I love it, or place. It's not restricted to a building designated for church services. It's not restricted to a certain location. It's not restricted to be to, to Jerusalem where you gotta go. That woman thought, she said, listen, you know, this well has meaning. This well has forever meaning because this is where our fathers worshiped. Huh. He said the time is coming when you won't even have to worship God any longer in this mountain, upon this mountain, upon this plot of ground that you have deemed as hallowed, sacred. The hour is coming and is now that they that worship, you're going to worship in spirit. You're going to worship in truth. You're going to worship in understanding of Holy Spirit. You're going to worship him in spirit. Having to know Jesus by way of Holy Spirit. Intentional. You're going to worship him intentionally through coming to know him. Not restricted. You ain't got to come here. You're going to worship him in your house. You're going to worship him out on the beach. You can worship him walking the streets. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me hear it and finish. So worship, it can happen wherever we are. Wherever a spirit inhabited being. 
may be at any time. So worship, it must flow from a heart that is true. Remember, in truth, that's true to God. That's true to God. See, we, we lead people through the prayer of salvation. I need to say something. Because a lot of times people, you know, have not bought in to a lifestyle of righteousness completely. Maybe they've said the confession. Yeah, if you confess what your heart believe, you know, confess what your mouth believe in your heart, you shall be saved. Be, the, you know, in the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Right. But but you got to live out a life of truth. You got to walk it out in truth. You got to live. Come on. And then we're ready to ask God for blessings and you're not living in truth. And that very, very persuasive encounter that Jesus had with that woman. Come on, he knew some things. And she had had so many husbands and the one she was with was not hers. When he made the offer for her to have this kind of lifestyle, you know, and he knew it. The very fact that she came to the well that time of day in the heat of the day, nobody came. She had shame in her life. That's why she showed up when nobody was there. And Jesus knew that. And that time of day, he waited there. And that's one of the reasons that he said, I must need go through Samaria. He had. <laughs> he knew that there was going to be a meeting that he needed to have and someone who was living a life, hallelujah, of shame needed to be saved. All right. All right. So I wanted to touch on the essence of worship. The essence. Why? Because it has distinction. God seeks worshipers. He seeks men. He doesn't seek worship. He already got it in heaven. But he's seeking men to worship in what? In the earth. Yes. He doesn't need worship. Amen. He needs men. He put Adam in the earth to reflect him. Okay. He, he fervently seeks those who have adopted the lifestyle in a mindset of a worshiper. Amen, amen, amen. It is intimate. What I wanted you to know is intimate. It is not distant. The heart of man can't be distant and say I'm a worshiper. Can't worship without your heart. Relationship is required. Gotta walk in truth. Walk the relationship out. And it requires communion and fellowship. Communion and fellowship. And it's not always visible. Hello. It is not always, it is not always visible. Praise is visible. Worship. Uh, amen. It's visually unassuming. Most of the time this quiet cannot be seen with the natural eye. So let me get back to my page. If I can have oh, just about six more minutes, I'm ready to cut this thing off. So then praise waiting. Praise causes us to release the character of God. Many will hear and see our worship and know the Lord because of the character of God revealed. They're going to hear it. I need to read Psalm 40 right quick. 40 and 3. Psalm 40 in 3. And, and, and worship is primarily a vertical one-on-one -on -one action. Uh, it's more private. It's preoccupied more with who God is. That's the character thing. Than to what he does. Amen. Wife and I were just sharing last night while we were down here praising God. We need all forms of worship, you know. Every way the Bible said we ought to praise God, praise him in the dance, praise him in all of that. And sometimes we've thrown away once we come into whatever we come into. And sometimes uh, people are quick to say, well, I came out of traditional ways. I came out, you know, we've been conditioned by tra tradition. But guess what? You can recreate your own traditions even after you say, well, I've come out of tradition because to dismiss something that God says, I want you to do it this way. 
Some people stop with praise. All they want to do is praise the Lord by our terminology, by our teachings on how we praise the Lord. Enter in. It's, it's, it's visible. It's, uh, um, what do I say to my syllabus? Uh, praise is, uh, it's the essence of it. It is uh, seen. It's the, it has an extroverted, non-introverted, an extroverted nature celebration, exhilaration. Those things are visible with the eye. It's called the extroverted nature, amen, of praise. It's characterized by these things. It is expressed through singing. This is in my, my teaching syllabus, teaching right out of it. Shouting, speaking for, playing the musical instruments, dancing and other external forms, external, extroverted. These are the things that we can see. It's a function of the will. You will. It's declared or manifested or you use your mouth to declare who he is. But worship is somewhat different from that. Okay? Psalm 40 and 3. Worship is more it has introverted nature. Hallelujah. Psalm 40 and 3. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. And then Psalm 107, I think I close with that. Psalm 40 and verse 3. And we have the accounting of God's word that speaks to us on this wise. It says, and he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Now here it is. Many shall hear. This kind of worship I'm talking about serves as a powerful witness to unbelievers. Can you imagine at our gathered worship places, our gatherings, and even our lifestyle, people can, you know, people know, they may not always can put their hand on it, but when we're living a, a godly lifestyle, when we're living a, a lifestyle of worship in our lives, amen, there's a reflection of who you are. Shows up in your conversation. Shows up in how you interact with people. People know there's something about you, something different about you. And many times they're inquisitive and they want to know. How is it you, you know, you always even killed, you always this, this, this. You know, and I won't go up to all the scenarios for how they can see that there's something. But that's a witness. The lifestyle witnesses. The lifestyle always witness, witnesses because fruit shows up and people can see fruit. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto God. Why? So that many will hear it. Many shall see it and fear it and shall trust in the Lord. Oh, we just saw here I've always used Psalm 67 to teach that praise is evangelistic. Let the people praise thee, O God. Yea, let all the people praise thee. And the earth shall yield or give up her increase, not just physical increase of produce, I believe is evangelistic. And also that the earth will give up its her uh, increase. It is, come on, praise that the Lord can draw men to God. Then he says, let the people praise thee, O God. Yes, let all the people praise thee, and even our God shall come and judge us righteously. He said they will see here in Psalm 40, even they will see and hear and fear, and they shall trust in the Lord. They come in here as talking about declaring the names through hymns. Declaring the names through spiritual songs. Speaking of Messiah, Mishak. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Messiah. Mm. Mekadesh. Uh, talking about God who sanctifies us. Jehovah Mekadesh. Glory to God. Uh, and talking about his healing power. Speaking it out. Do you know there'll be some who want to come to the Lord because they hear your description through your praise of this God that you are serving. Then he says, blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust 
and the respected mouth, the proud mind. God, they're going to hear. Last verse, Psalm 107 and 22. Psalm 107 and 22. Yes, let's just meander over to Psalm 107. Yes, I've enjoyed teaching you today. And the word of the Lord says here in Psalm 107 and verse 22. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And declare his works with rejoicing. How are we going to declare or make known or speak of? Declaring is also publishing. Thou shalt decree a thing, publish, say a thing, speak a thing, and declare it, and let them declare his works. That's that word again, Aliyah, Alila. His exploits, his deeds, we're declaring it in worship. Who he is, what he does, his actions. <laughs> Woohoo! All of that. What else? We are declaring his works, deeds, exploits, all the stuff that he does. Let them declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down into the sea and ships that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep, everywhere you are. Mm -hmm. Your professions, your area of work, some kind of way, as you declare who God is, someone is going to want to follow. Well, I'm done for today. Glad that you could join us. Glad that you came in. Share this teaching with someone. Share it, share it, share it. And how can they share it? I'm on Facebook now. Um, uh, as Gary Deloach, okay? And uh, you can join us on my YouTube channel. I was glad when they said unto me to tell you about our YouTube channel. Uh, you simply go to YouTube, type in Gary Deloach Ministries. And when you get there, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel so you can receive all notifications uh, anytime we're coming on. Also, you can get all of these teachings. They are out there uploaded. Go there. Go back over and do what we call meditation. The pleasant murmuring over and over. You can listen to it over and over. If I went too fast for you today, you could go and just eat it. Uh, come on, consume it. Take notes, if you will, so that you can start make it, uh, making it applicable to your life and you want to do that because the, the the plethora multiplicity of benefits that come through praising god this way through worshiping the king who is the center and the focus of our worship kingdom when we do kingdom worship there's a kingdom sound that's released Hallelujah. We're in the days where the sound of heaven is coming to earth in our worship. The sound that is distinguished, listen to this, that distinguish, distinguishes itself from all other sounds. Come on here. So the waters are not muddy or cluttered. Come on. The enemy is such a deceiver. He wants to infield straight, you know, that which is God's. He's, he's a mimicker, a one who mimics, copies the sound of God and tried to use it. Come on. Remember, he was kicked, Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, thrown out, and he began to pervert. God didn't strip him of what he knew. He was the head worshiper in heaven. But what did he do? He began to Pervert worship. That's been what he's done ever since. Perverted. 
So the enemy wants to bring perverted worship and mimic and call it the sound, but the sound of heaven brings deliverance. The sound of heaven brings the weight, the heavy Shekinah, the glory, the manifest presence. And the sound of heaven is not just about the melody. It speaks. It speaks. Do six, do, do, <laughs> do, uh, do six. It is that part of glory that speaks of God's total holiness and every, all he is, his character, doxa, the glory, give him doxa, doxezo, which means to have a good opinion of. That glory is gonna make God the highlight. Come on, he is the only one in the room. Glory to God. Go to the YouTube channel, type in Gary DeLoach Ministries, and watch us on your big screen. You can pull up uh, so many wonderful teachings. And then our praise conference that we normally do annually. Uh, so normally in October, but we had to do it because of everything that was going on in our nation and our world. Um, we did it virtually back in January. Go back out there and plug in, listen to that entire conference in its entirety all over. Uh, many teachers that were there. Uh, uh, Dr. Phil Topper, what a praiser, what a praiser. Amen, my friend. Uh, and the teaching Saturday, uh, where different ones of us, uh, Dr. Pamela Hardy, a tremendous woman of God, that Kyle woman <laughs> who teaches, uh, has a school there. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, uh, where she teaches, and her, her Conference is coming up real soon. Uh, Worship Summit in Dallas, Texas. And we plan to be there as we have been for the last three years. What an awesome teacher she is. She talks about dance. God has given her how to overcome the enemy, uh, even destroying the enemy through dance, even the interpretation of, of, of dance in, in the spirit. You need to hear her. One of the tremendous teachers I've heard in our time, tremendous teacher, Dr. Pamela Hardy. Uh, yes, and of course, Dr. Chris Hardy and Lady Rhonda and myself, we were teaching in that conference. You want to get it. All right, well, we are done for today. One more thing, one more thing to share with you. If the Lord should put it on your heart that you want to sow into this ministry, you can do that. And uh, glory to God. Very, very simple. You can do it by just uh, if you do cash app, there it is on the screen. That's up to you. We thank God for your giving, your sowing, and we pray for you. Pray for your seed sowing when you sow. Guess what? We believe that God blesses you because this is good ground to sow in. Somebody's looking at me now. Uh, you need, you have a need. And the Lord is telling you, you simply need to sow a seed and just rest in the Lord, trust in him. He said, because as long as the earth shall stand, there will always be seed, seed time and harvest. There's a time, hallelujah, that God will respond. Amen. And we'll pray, put your request there somewhere. What you believe in God for as you sow your seed. Well, you bless me. If we bless you in any kind of way, hey, sow that seed. You want to become a partner and say, Apostle, I would like to sow. Someone told me recently, I want to sow uh, now, but I want to sow regularly because I'm being blessed. My family is being blessed by your teaching. And of course, we always say, if you are a member of a local church, you have a pastor, don't, you know, don't give your tithe. Your tithe belongs to your local church church where you go i taught a series called uh wherever the lord has called you to go go there give there go there eat there and give there go there <laughs> eat there and give there you go there he's placed men in the body as it pleases him and you eat from the table of your teacher 
Amen. That's not to say that you're not blessed by fivefold ministry. Our people are. Amen. I didn't God didn't give it to me all, but he just gave me to shepherd those. Amen. And uh, we expose them to the fivefold ministry. And also you give there. Amen. But you can all wait so, amen, into uh, ministries. But your time belongs to your local church. We don't accept your tithe. If you're not a member of a church and you want to tithe, then if you want to tithe here, we'll receive your tithe and believe that God will open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. And we'll also encourage you uh, to get involved in a local church. And perhaps you have nowhere to go. There's a, there's a, there's a tremendous church I heard about called Praise in the Church for All Nations. <laughs> Amen. With the preaching, teaching, worshiping pastor and people who love the presence of God. Amen, amen, amen. One more thing, uh, PayPal, you can sow by PayPal. Just simply do paypal.me forward slash Praise Center Church. Yes, 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 yes. And then I didn't give you the ministry line. If you need to call us or send in a prayer request before tonight, we're going to be praying. We're going to be intense. We're going to go into the enemy's camp, take back what belongs to the kingdom of God. We're going to take families. We're going to uh, bring families. we restoring and rebuilding family altars. Family altars. Altars are places, hallelujah, where we have access and we get in touch with God. It's a place of yieldedness. Amen. So here's the number 501-983-2355 is the number to call our ministry line. 501-983-2355. Or you can email us at the ministry email, which is PCC underscore FAN at yahoo.com. That is not the prayer line. So if you want to come on and join us in prayer, as uh, my wife always says and states, you won't have to pray. We won't, we won't ask you to pray. We're praying, but just being in the environment of prayer. Glory to God. Get your family, bring them on. Because there are things that are prayed and said that may touch. Oh, my God. Just a, uh, about a week ago, one of our guests, uh, intercessors, uh, apostle, came on and he touched on oh, I think he touched everybody on the line. So many responses that he touched areas, began to pray for things that, that they hadn't even had a chance to ask to be prayed for. That's operating in the realm of the spirit. Amen. So we want you to be a part of this tonight. If you would, just come on and God's going to bless you. The time is 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. 10 minutes before seven, we are on all ready. And you will normally hear me doing some musical worship. And you just come in and you'll be listening to the music until it's time to start promptly at 7 p.m. CDT, Central Daylight Time. There's the number again. If you want to write it down or you can go back out and look at this broadcast again to get it. 267-807-9611. Access code is 577-327. Hashtag at what a season of the Lord's doings. Exploits. We're in a transitional season coming into fall. I love it. The air has changed outside. Amen. As it is, is that not first which is natural, then that which is spiritual. So it is an indicator that something's changing, something's moving. See his glory. Feels like heaven on earth. We love you. God bless you. Have a blessed rest of your day. I'm looking to see you. I can't see you on the line, but we know where you come from. We see the numbers. Do we look after on our device? But knowing that those little beepings, the bells are ringing, you are coming in by the numbers. 
bring your family. Mothers, bring your daughters. Fathers, bring your sons. So they used to say, and let's run to Jesus, everyone. Good day, everybody. We love you.